Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're doing another declutter. Today we're decluttering bronzers, powders, highlighters, and face palettes. This is probably gonna be a more cutthroat declutter than the first one was. If you didn't see my first declutter, we decluttered concealers, primers, and foundations. I will link it in the description box if you haven't seen it. This is the second one we're doing, and we're doing bronzer, powder, highlighter, and face palettes. And I am gonna be a little more brutal in this category because uh, this drawer is my second drawer down back here, and it's definitely way, way, way over full. Too many things, we're gonna get rid of some stuff here. So grab a snack, get ready. I hope you love it, and if you don't, I don't care, I'm doing it anyways. Please don't leave hateful comments on this video. If you do, your comment will be deleted and you will be removed from the channel. So knock yourself out if you feel the need to leave a hateful comment on declutters. I don't know why you clicked on this video to begin with, but you will be removed if you do. I think that is everything. I hope you enjoy it. We're gonna go through everything. I'm gonna tell you what I like, what I don't like, why, if I'm keeping something, why I'm keeping it or why I'm getting rid of it. I'll swatch as many things as I can. And again, remember, I do this as a job. I get a lot of makeup in PR. I buy a lot of makeup for review. Makeup is my hobby. I love it. I like having a lot of makeup. It's my thing. Everyone has their thing. Makeup is mine. So keep that in mind as you're watching this declutter. Does not mean you need this much makeup. Nobody needs this much makeup. It's not about need for me. It's about it being a job and also just what I love. So keep that in mind. And anything that is, you know, in good condition, I will pass on to somebody if I'm able to. Some of it is just old though. So the old stuff's gotta go and I will pass on what I can. All right, I think that's everything. Let's get into it. It's gonna be a long one. I hope you enjoy. All right, so here's what we're starting with. It's a lot. This drawer really, really needs to be decluttered. So powders are supposed to be back here, but they've kind of migrated up this way because there's so many now. Highlighters are in here, bronzers, and then face palettes are over there. But like I said in the intro, I'm thinking we're definitely going to get rid of some stuff here because this is just too much. And I know that some of these things I could definitely let go of. So be prepared. We are going to get rid of some things. We'll start with powders, then highlighters, bronzers, and face palettes. So let's get started. All right, we're starting with powders and we're going to start with this group. So when I did my first declutter, I started by picking the things that I knew I was definitely going to keep and just kind of went from there. So I think that's what we're gonna do with this drawer as well. So let's pick the things that I know are going to stay. First powder is the Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Powder. This is one of my newest powders in my collection. This one is in the shade Translucent Light. And I've used this a few times. I am still undecided about this. I don't definitely don't dislike it but I don't know that it's like my absolute favorite powder just yet. It's definitely very smoothing. I do think sometimes, depending on what you pair it with, it can look a little bit on the dry side, especially if you have dry skin. I would say this might be a little bit too dry for you. But yeah, oily skin, I think you might like this, but this is definitely gonna stay. I need some more time with this for sure. So that is an easy keep. Another keep is the new Rare Beauty Powder. This one is the shade Ivory. So this is the second lightest shade. And I'm still testing this as well. This is my newest powder in my collection right now. So this is a little bit more of a warm toned powder. But honestly, the shades on these Rare Beauty ones are very off. They're either or they're not off, but they're just very extreme. They're either very cool or very warm. There's not much neutral 
Honestly, I probably should have gotten the lightest shade, which was one down from this. And this was okay. The times I've tried it, it's okay. It's nothing really exciting or really unlike other powders that we've seen before, but I like it. Do I think it's the greatest thing ever? No, not so far, but I want to keep using it since it's brand new. So that one will definitely stay. Another easy keep is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Matte Velvet Powder. This is the shade 1N10. This I really, really like. Um, this is actually a powder foundation, and I typically use this anytime when I wanna add a little bit more coverage to a base or anytime when I want just a little bit more, especially if I'm using a really light coverage product, like a tinted moisturizer or something, I'll use this to kind of mattify and add a little bit more coverage. It does get hard pan pretty bad, like you might be able to see right there, which, you know, is not my favorite thing, but that's okay, we can fix that pretty easy. But I do like this powder for sure, and I do wanna keep it. Another keep is this little mini Laura Mercier translucent powder. I actually really love the original Laura Mercier powder. I know this is such an OG product for a lot of people, and honestly, I really like this. I really, really like it. I have tried the newer versions as well, and I like those too. This was the original, but I like to keep this little mini uh, for when I travel. It's just really handy to have a little baby size, and I do like the powder. So that I will definitely keep. Another keep is Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Powder. This one is in the shade Medium. This used to be like a top, top favorite for me. In the last few years, I haven't used it as much, but I do still like it. This is the shade Medium, so I do have to be a little bit deeper in terms of my complexion to use the Medium shade, but I do like this powder. I do think other powders have come along that are just as good, if not better than this, but I do like it and I wanna keep it. It is incredibly smoothing, incredibly smoothing. Honestly, it kind of reminds me of that Hourglass powder, but I don't think it's quite as dry as the Hourglass. But this is a keep for sure. I promise we're gonna get rid of some. I'm just keeping, I'm getting the ones out of the way in the beginning that I know I'm gonna keep. I am gonna keep this. I need to use this more. I got this in PR a long time ago. This is Laura Geller Baked and Balance, or Baked Balance and Brighten Powder Foundation. This is actually the shade Medium, and they sent me the shade Light as well. What's interesting about this powder is it's marbleized, like you can see here. So I find it's a little bit tricky to apply because depending on where you put your brush in the pan, it looks a little bit different in terms of the shade when you put it on your face. So sometimes when I've tried using this, I find it kind of looks a little bit patchy. And I'm wondering if it's because there's so many different colors. I don't know, I didn't think it went on my skin super smoothly. But also, I don't know that this is the best color for me. They also sent me the shade Light. I gave that one to my mom because, believe it or not, the shade Light was actually darker looking than the shade Medium. And my mom is a lot deeper than me. She's like a medium to tan skin tone. So I gave that one to her to try, and I kept the shade Medium, but I don't know. I'm very undecided about this. I'm actually gonna do a video or a live with Martina Lilly about Laura Geller. So I wanna hang on to this, at least for that live, just to use it. But I'm, I'm definitely not in love with it. I'm very undecided on it, but I am gonna keep it a while longer. Okay, one I am gonna get rid of is the Huda Beauty Easy Bake and Snatch. I really wanted to love this, but uh, this powder just isn't my favorite. It's a, it's very drying and it looks heavy. The main complaint I have with it is it looks heavy. This is the shade Pound Cake and you know, I think the idea or I know the idea was that this would be just a pressed version of the original Easy Bake powder. 
And it's definitely different. This one looks heavier, it looks drier, it has a lot of pigment to it. It's definitely not the same formula as the original one, sadly, because I know a lot of people love that one. And it's just not, definitely not a favorite for me. And I don't, I haven't loved it many times when I've used it. So I am going to declutter that one. Then we have Laura Mercier. This is the Ultra Blur. The pressed version. So this is the newer talc free version of the Laura Mercier powder and I do like this actually. I haven't used it recently but I do like it. I think it's a good formula. Very very blurring and smoothing and I like it. I have the shade translucent. I think it comes in like three shades but I do enjoy this one. I will also be keeping this NARS uh, translucent, or yeah, translucent powder, the light reflecting setting powder. I like this. I've never fallen head over heels in love with it. I do find, I like this more of like a finishing powder. I don't find that this can really set your makeup, but I do think it's a good like finishing powder if you do your face of makeup and you feel like you need a little bit more powder or a little bit more pore refining. That's what I think this is good for. I also do like this under my eyes. So I will keep this. I like to pull this out and use this more, honestly. So that I will keep. I will also keep the, what is the Soft Matte Advanced Powder in the shade Creek. This powder from NARS, I really like. Now this powder has more pigment to it, kind of like the Rare Beauty one does. It's definitely, yeah, you can see there, it's definitely got a lot more oomph to it instead of in terms of pigment. And this is very mattifying, very, very mattifying. So if you have dry skin, you're probably not gonna love this one. It's a little bit of a thicker powder and it's very mattifying, but it's also very smoothing on the skin. So this I would say is definitely more for oily skin. I would say I have normal, slightly oily T-zone and I can still get away with this, but I do think if you're very dry, this would be too dry for you. But I like it, so I will keep it. All right, one I'm undecided about is this Bobbi Brown, the Vitamin Enriched uh, Powder. This one's the shade Neutral, so this is a very, interesting product. It's extremely sheer. Like, I don't know if you can tell, but not much comes off when you swatch it, even if you really like going hard with it. I do find it's kind of hard to pick up the product. I don't know if it's just the, the formula or it's just very hardly pressed in here. I don't know. But I, this is one I'm going to put in the possible declutter get ready with me video because I just... I don't feel certain about this. I don't feel that I want to keep it, but I'm not 100% certain that I want to get rid of it. So for now, that's going to go in the maybe declutter pile. Then we have Maybelline Fit Me. Now, this used to be my favorite pressed powder, pressed setting powder from the drugstore. Now, my favorite is the NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop, but this one is still good and I do like it. This is the, I think the translucent color. Yeah, this is a good powder. I've tried the pressed and the loose. I have the loose that we'll get to in a bit, but I do prefer the pressed version. And I do like this. I like this powder. It wouldn't be my number one. The NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop from the drugstore would be number one, but they're both very mattifying and smoothing on the skin. Uh, so I do recommend. So I will keep Maybelline and La Mer. La Mer, the sheer press powder. This product has been discontinued as far as I know. I got this a long time ago at a cosmetics company store. I found it randomly for like 75% off. And this is a good powder, but I don't use it because you can't get it, number one. Number two, it was very expensive. It was like $90 retail when you could get it. I just happened to get mine 75% off, but I'm torn on this because you can't get it, so I'm not gonna be able to use it in videos, really. I thought about maybe putting this in my purse as like a touch-up powder, but 
It doesn't come with like a puff or anything. Uh, so this is actually gonna go in the maybe with the Huda Beauty powder and we'll decide later on. So I know we didn't get rid of many in that round, but we are gonna get rid of some. Moving along to these. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pick the ones I know I'm keeping. Probably my favorite out of this whole group is this one, the Sigma Loose Setting Powder. I have the shade Vanilla Bean. This is a very highly underrated powder. It is so smoothing on the skin. It mattifies, it sets the makeup, it's, but it doesn't look heavy. It doesn't look like powder when you look up close. It just looks, it makes your skin look airbrushed. Honestly, that's what I love about it. I think, no, I don't hear anyone talking about this formula and I don't know why, because this is one of my favorite loose setting powders that I've tried. So that is for sure an easy keep. Also a keep is the Tarte Creaseless Setting Powder in pink. I just got this. This is a new product. It uh, is nice for the under eyes. Mine actually came like this. It came with all the powder spilling out, which is kind of annoying. But what I will say about this, this is the pink color and this is probably the most smoothing and blurring loose powder that I've ever tried. If you want your under eyes to literally look non-human, <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it, but that is how smooth this powder can look. Now, if you go overboard with it, for that reason, it can look a little bit dry. So I would say be Use less of this than you think you need. If you use a puff, maybe tap off the excess before you go in under the eyes because I'm not kidding, with very little powder, it is smooth. Like baby's butt smooth. So you've been warned. But I do like it, it's, it's new to me. So I wanna hold on to it, but keep that in mind if you do try it. I will also be keeping the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. I got this during the last Nordstrom anniversary sale. They had a set with this and the Dooland brush. They also had the set this year, I think. But I was like the last person I feel to try this loose powder and I like it. It reminds me a little bit of the Sigma one. I think the Sigma powder is a little bit more mattifying than this one. This one leaves more glow behind. So if you're looking to set your makeup but you want you don't want to totally take all the glow from your skin. This is a really good loose powder. So that will be staying. I will also keep Fenty Invisimat. This is another great touch up powder. In fact, this is probably my favorite touch up powder that I have. So I don't use this to set my makeup. I use this after I've already set my makeup with a loose powder. I'll take some of this in the T-zone and it makes my skin look very airbrushed, very, very airbrushed, but it doesn't set the makeup. It just kind of smooths things over, kind of like how I was talking about the NARS Light Reflecting Powder. These two are very similar. This one is even more smoothing, honestly, than this one. So honestly, I could probably keep Fenty and declutter this because I definitely prefer the Fenty one, but for now, I'm gonna keep both, but they're similar. Definitely more finishing powders though. So those are not gonna be great for actually setting the makeup. Okay, now we're about to get rid of some. I will be decluttering the Maybelline Fit Me in the loose version. This is not terrible, but it's, it's too heavy for me. It looks very thick on my skin. This is shade Fair Light, so it's not translucent. It has a good bit of pigment to it. It's just a little too much for me on my skin, but not a bad powder. If you like loose powder and you're looking for a drugstore option, this is not bad, but for me, it's a little bit too heavy. So that I will be decluttering. I will also be decluttering the One Size Powder in the shade Ultra Pink. I kind of feel the same way about this one, to be honest. This is the pink one. It's too thick. It just looks like powder and a very heavy caked powder 
on my skin. Every time I use it, I just, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. It's too much. It's just too heavy. So I'm sad about this. I really wanted to like this, but if I'm going for a pink under eye loose powder, I would go Tarte 100%. It's much more finely milled and just not thick feeling on the skin. I don't like a thick feeling powder and this always feels like too much for me. So I will declutter. I will also declutter Maybelline Superstay. This is the powder foundation. This is not a terrible product, but first of all, the shade is way too yellow for me. This is shade 118 and this is very drying again and you can see like this is a very very pigmented powder like if you want some coverage this will give you coverage for sure but i just don't find myself wanting this type of product if i want a powder foundation i have others that i like a lot more and the shade is not great for me either so i will be decluttering i will keep the westman atelier vital pressed skincare powder in pink bubble. So this is a pressed pink powder and I really enjoy this. If I want a pressed powder for under my eyes, I like this one from Westman Atelier. Now this is again kind of more of a finishing powder to me. This I would say sets the under eyes. This I would say kind of finishes them. If you feel like you need a little bit more or you just want a little more brightness, a little bit more of like a pop under your eyes. That's what I would use this for. But I don't know how well I think this sets the under eyes. I would call it more of a pink under eye finishing powder. So we will keep that. This is the Fenty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. This is actually new. I just got this. I got it, maybe it was Memorial Day. I don't remember. Fenty was doing 50% off sale on this for like a day. And I always hear Marlena Stell here on YouTube talking about this is like her holy grail powder foundation. She has it in like 10 different shades. So I got it to try it out. I've only used it once. I don't really have any thoughts on it yet. So I will definitely keep that and keep trying it. I will also keep my MAC Studio Fix. This is just a classic powder foundation. Definitely a lot of coverage with this one as well. This is not a sheer powder foundation by any means, but if I want a very pigmented powder foundation, this would be one of the ones that I would use. And I do like the color on this. I have the shade NW22. And finally, Pat McGrath. Sublime Perfection Under Eye Powder. Surprisingly, I am gonna declutter this. Yeah, I didn't really think I was going to, but the more I think about it, I just don't love this powder. I've had this for years. This is old. You can see it's like Pat McGrath is rubbed off on the back and the front. And it's, I've tried it so many times and I just don't love it. It's okay, but I don't love it. I just recently got the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder, the loose one for under the eyes. And I just feel like I don't need this. If I want a pressed under eye powder, I have the Westman one. If I want the loose version of under eye powder, I have the Laura one. I just, I think I can declutter this and not miss it. All right, this is it for powders. I'm not doing too well with the powder category, am I? Easy keep, makeup forever. This powder, I absolutely love. HD Skin Setting Powder. This in the shade Corrective Rose. So it's a pink, but it's not overly pink. It has like a pink undertone, but it comes with a puff. You get a ton of product in here. This is my favorite loose setting powder right now. It is perfect in every way. It sets and mattifies without looking heavy. It blurs the pores. It is just beautiful. I even like it under my eyes with a powder puff. I love this. 10 out of 10, highly recommend if you want a new loose setting powder. This would be like my top, top, top recommendation. Another keep is my Broken Kosas powder. <laughs> Look how terrible this thing looks. I don't, I really wish 
the packaging it was not this way. Mine broke long ago. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know why it, I mean, it looks like I like really banged it up. I've used it a ton, but it, I don't, I wish it didn't break like this, but I still love this powder. I still use it. It's in my everyday makeup drawer right now. So I'm going to put it back, but I do still love it. So I am going to keep that one. Another keep my house labs bio blurring powder. If you've been around my channel for a while, you will know that this used to be my absolute favorite. And I still love it. I still think it's a great powder. This is beautiful. No one talks about this formula either, but this is a very nice smoothing powder that doesn't look heavy. That's like my number one criterion for a powder, a loose powder especially. I want it to set the makeup, but I do not want it to look heavy. And I find a lot of loose powders can look really heavy if you're not careful. This one does not. This one is also talc free, which is amazing. And it's top, 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 top quality. So I highly recommend that one as well. NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Powder, easy keep. This is my favorite powder from the drugstore. If I had to pick one, it would be this one. Similar to Maybelline Fit Me, poreless, matte and poreless, but this one is just a little bit more smoothing and it just looks even better on my skin. They're very similar, but I would choose the NYX one. And the NYX comes in like eight or nine shades, which is amazing. You can tell I love mine because mine's all rubbed off, but I, I think this is a fabulous product. Highly recommend. This is my new Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. So yes, this is an easy keep. Um, Uh-oh, made a mess. I just got this, so I've only had this for like two weeks and I'm still testing it to figure out exactly how I feel about it. But so far, I really like this for the under eyes. So that will be staying. I will be decluttering this from Milk. This is the Pore Eclipse Translucent Powder. This looks very heavy on my skin. It doesn't look smooth at all. It just looks like I packed powder on my face and it stuck there. <laughs> That's what this looks like on my skin. I was so disappointed because I really wanted to like this. I got this in PR, but just not my thing. It looked way too heavy. It kind of clung in certain areas, just did not look smooth at all on my skin. So that I will be decluttering. This one kind of reminds me of the Milk one, the MAC Studio Fix Pro Set and Blur. I'm keeping this one because this is brand new. So I'm gonna keep testing it, I'm gonna keep using it, but I'm not sure this is gonna be a favorite either, but I'm gonna keep it just to keep testing it to make sure. This is the shade Light. This one doesn't look as heavy as that Milk one does, but I have used this a few times and it looked cakey. And I don't like that. It just looked, again, like powder smeared on my face. It looked dry and heavy, which is not my favorite, but I'm gonna keep it, keep testing it, but I'm not, I don't recommend that one as of now. Easy Keep Jane Iredell Powder Foundation. This is a gorgeous powder foundation. It's a matte finish, but it's a softer matte finish. It's not drying in any way. Gives great coverage, also has SPF in it. This is just, this is a great product. It's honestly similar to Makeup Forever HD Skin. I've been reaching for this one much more. You can kind of see here, I'm about to hit pan on this. You can see the rings through here. I love this, especially in the summer when it's hot, like it is right now, it is hot outside. And this really does keep me matte, gives coverage, but it doesn't look heavy. So that is an easy one. Natasha Denona High Glam. I also like this powder foundation. This is not nearly as matte as the Jane Iredell. This does smooth and slightly mattifies the skin, but definitely not to the degree of the Makeup Forever or the Jane Iredell. This is more of a natural finish powder foundation. I do like it though. I have the shade N3 and this is a fantastic shade match for me. So I will be keeping it, but I do think if you're looking for matte powder foundation, this is not gonna be it. I would direct you to Jane Iredell or Makeup Forever. I also have this from Jane Iredell. This is the Powder Me SPF. So this is just a translucent powder 
with SPF 30. I don't use this unless I'm going to the beach or the pool. That's kind of what I use this for. But it's one of those that you twist up and then the powder is inside and it comes out through the brush. But I, I keep this just for special occasions like the pool or we're actually going to Disney next month. So I might take this with me there. So I will hang on to this, but I don't use this for like an everyday makeup product. Givenchy Prismate Libre Powder. I'm gonna keep this, this is the shade three. <sighs> Everyone loves this and I want to love it so bad. I don't think it's bad, but I've never used this and thought that it was just this great thing. I, I mean, I think it's fine, but I honestly prefer my Makeup Forever and Corrective Rose. This one's fine and it was expensive, so I am gonna keep it. I need it for video purposes anyway, but it's not my favorite, to be honest, I think. There are better loose powders out there, just my opinion. I am gonna keep it though. Okay, Jouer Soft Focus Hydrate and Set Powder in the shade Fair. I'm gonna keep this. I got this in PR recently actually, and I've been using it and liking it so far. I think this one is very, very, very pore blurring. I was kind of surprised to be honest, um, and I've been liking it so far. I'm actually wearing this right now and I really like it. So we will keep that. Oh gosh, okay, we have two Huda Beauty powders. We have Cupcake and Cherry Blossom Cake. I do not need both of these, so one of these is gonna go. I don't know why I felt the need to buy both. I like this powder. I wish it wasn't so scented. I know they made a, a, an unscented version of this, I think. You have to get it from the Huda website or something. I do think it's a good powder. It's definitely more of like a makeup y powder though. I don't use this on a daily basis. This is a little bit heavy and a lot for me for daily wear, but I do like having it for those like special occasions. I don't need both though. So I'm gonna get rid of Cupcake because Cupcake is very similar, if not identical in color to Makeup Forever Corrective Rose. And I definitely prefer Makeup Forever Corrective Rose. So I'm gonna declutter Cupcake, and I'm gonna keep Cherry Blossom Cake. This one is the more pinky toned one, and you know, am I gonna use this all the time? No. But I do wanna have one of these, cause I do like the formula, I just, I wish it wasn't so scented. So I'm gonna keep Cherry Blossom Cake and declutter Cupcake. And then we are left with the OG Bare Minerals. Y'all, this is so painful for me because this was my first foundation. This was my first makeup product I ever wore was this, Bare Minerals Original. But that was years ago. That was when I was in high school. And I, I always hang on to these because they're nostalgic, but I just don't use this foundation anymore. If I'm gonna use a powder foundation, I am most likely gonna use a pressed powder foundation. I just, I think I need to let these go. I wanna hold on to them just for, you know, nostalgia, but they're taking up space and I'm not using them. I don't know the last time I pulled these out. So I think those are gonna go. All right, I did not do very well in the powder category. I only have 10 in the declutter. I feel like I need to get rid of some more of these. All right, you know what? Actually, we're gonna get rid of both the Huda Beauty powders because the reality is I like this more. The Makeup Forever, the HD Skin, I just like this more. It's not scented, I don't think. Let me make sure I don't think it is. Yeah, no, this, this is the one I like the best. If I'm choosing, I don't need the Huda and this one, I like this one more. So Cherry Blossom Cake is also gonna go. This one was expensive and I'm just, I'm not gonna get rid of that one. So we're gonna keep that for now. I am gonna get rid of one of these because these are very similar powders and I, I, I don't feel that I need both. So honestly, and same goes for these. These are very similar powders. So I just, I don't think I need two of these because these are basically the same thing, but Invisimat, I like better. 
from Fenty. So I'm gonna keep Invisimat and Declutter NARS. And then Laura Mercier, or NARS, I prefer Laura Mercier. They're similar, but if I were choosing, I think I would choose Laura Mercier in Translucent. This one doesn't have as much pigment as the NARS one has, which I prefer. I usually don't. If I'm choosing, I would like something more translucent for a powder more than something super pigmented, unless it's a powder foundation. So I am gonna keep La Mercier and Declutter NARS. So I think that's it for powders. All right, we started with 37. We're keeping 25. We're decluttering 12, possibly 14, because we have these two in the maybes. But for now, decluttering 12. We'll start with these, do the same thing, pick the ones I know are staying right away. Number one, this one from Lancome. This is brand new, the Skin Transforming Bronzer in the shade Light. This is beautiful. I absolutely love this formula. It is velvety. It's smooth, it's neutral, it's not too orange. It's very just almost blurring on the skin. This is a gorgeous formula. These are new from Lancome. Highly recommend, love the shade light. So that one is easy. Also keeping Victoria Beckham, the bronzing brick. This is the shade number two. I love this. My only thing with it is mine does get really bad hard pan. And I don't know why, because I feel like I get it off and then the next time I use it, it gets hard pan again. But I love this bronzer. I love the formula. It's really smooth and almost like a velvety texture. This is shade number two. It's very subtle. They're not like crazy, crazy intensely pigmented. But this is a gorgeous bronzer and the packaging is everything. It's heavy. It's pretty. I love it. It does get hard pan though. I don't know if it's just me or maybe this formula just kind of has tendency to do that. I don't know, but that one gets pretty bad hard pan for me. Another keep is Gucci bronzer. This is in the shade number one. Actually, this is a newer, it's not newer to me. I've had it for a while, but I have actually fallen a little bit more in love with it in the last few months. This is shade number one, so it's very rosy. But because of that, it looks very realistic on my skin tone. Typically for me, when I get sun, it has more of like a reddish, rosy undertone. So for that reason, shade one in the Gucci bronzer, it looks very natural on my skin tone. And it's taken me a while to kind of get into this one, but I like it. I'm liking it more and more. It does have an extremely strong smell. Let's keep that in mind. But I mean, the packaging you can't deny is beautiful. I mean, look at that. The turquoise blue is just, ugh, it's everything. I love it. So that will definitely be staying. Another key Mario bronzer. This is the shade light medium. This is a highly underrated powder bronzer to me. No one talks about Mario powder bronzers. They talk about the skin enhancer and they talk about the new um, bronzing serum, mainly the, the creams and the liquids. No one talks about the powder, but this is such a gorgeous, smooth, velvety bronzer formula. I think this is one of his slept on products in his brand. This is shade light medium. It's a little bit more, it's warm, but not super warm. It's more on the neutral side, I would say, but I, I think this is a gorgeous formula. I am gonna declutter this one from Jane Iredell. It's just not a favorite. I've tried it several times and it's, it's definitely not bad. It's a little bit dark for what I like on like an everyday basis, unless I'm, and it doesn't even swatch super dark, but when I've used this, I do find it looks a little bit harsh. Harsh in the sense that it's not easy to blend. It's not super easy to apply. I find it can be a little bit patchy. And the shade is not my favorite. Um, so I am gonna declutter this. I got this in PR a little while ago, 
and it's just not a favorite. This pains me, but I am going to also declutter this Dior Powder No Powder in the shade 4 Neutral. Do you remember when these were everywhere? These powders were in everyone's videos. There was a time when this shade in 4 Neutral was really, really popular as a bronzer. And it's a I mean, it's a pretty color for bronzer. This is more of like a luminous powder. It's a pretty color for bronzer for sure. But these, I mean, these have been gone for a few years now. Mine is looking kind of gross and disgusting. I don't reach for it anymore. So I will declutter. I wish they would bring those back from Dior. I'm kind of surprised that they haven't, to be honest but I'm gonna declutter. Now, this product from Mario, this is the Transforming Skin Perfector. So this product came out with his skin enhancer and I think the idea behind it was it was supposed to be like a setting product for the skin enhancer. So it has a bronzer, a highlighter color, and then like a setting powder, and you're supposed to like swirl them together and set the skin enhancer. But I don't think this product really took off because no one talks about it. In fact, I'm not even sure you can still get this product from him. I mean, it's, I don't know. I didn't really get this product to be honest. I bought it when the skin enhancer came out just because it went with it. But it's very powdery, it has a lot of kick up in the pan. And I, I do think I can declutter that. Then we have the OG NARS Laguna Bronzer. Every single declutter, I hang on to this because I remember this was my first bronzer ever. I bought a NARS Laguna Bronzer from Sephora. And this was when I was really starting to get into makeup. And I just thought that I was just the coolest thing ever because I had this NARS bronzer. And Laguna and then I remember I had used it for quite a while and one day I was in my bathroom and I dropped it and it shattered and I remember that feeling of just disgust that <laughs> I had shattered my NARS bronzer I just so when I see this that's what I think of this is a new one this is not that one obviously that I shattered but this is the older packaging. This is not like one of the newer ones, but I don't use this much anymore. That was way, way, way back when, when I had like one bronzer. I didn't have a YouTube channel at that point, but at the same time, it makes me kind of want to keep this. I can't get rid of it. I just, I can't get rid of that one. Okay. Then we have Jones Road, the bronzer. This one is in the shade Light Tan. All right, this is one that may go in the maybe pile because, yeah, so this has a rosier tone as well, which makes me think that I would like it, but I feel like I have not given this one the time at all to really test it out. So Jones Road is gonna go in the maybes and we'll use it in that video. I think I'm gonna declutter this. I can't believe I'm saying that, but I think I'm gonna declutter this, the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer. I remember how excited I was when this came out. I did a video on it. This is shade medium, and it's a good bronzer. There's nothing wrong with it, but this is another formula that gets hard pan really bad. I don't know why. And of the two, I definitely prefer Victoria Beckham over this one. This is a good matte bronzer. You get a lot of product in here, but am I gonna reach for this over the others that I've kept? No. So that is going to go. And then Tom Ford in the shade Terra. I am gonna keep this. This is a little baby size. This is a gorgeous bronzer. Haven't they discontinued this bronzer? Honestly, this formula kind of reminds me of, I just had a thought and now I've lost it. I think I was gonna say, this kind of reminds me of the House Labs bronzer, but even silkier. And it has like just the slightest bit of a radiance to it without being glittery. This is shade Terra. So that's it right there. It's very neutral. It's a good one. I think it's been discontinued though, but we will keep.
Okay, we're probably gonna get rid of some here. So prepare. RMS Beauty, this is brand new. In fact, I just filmed with this before starting this declutter. This is shade Tan Lines. This is definitely staying. I love this formula, it's gorgeous. Luminous without being glittery or shimmery. So that is an easy keep. Um, I will also be keeping the NARS Cream Bronzer in Laguna 01. This is a really, really good cream bronzer formula. It is so smooth, it's very pigmented, but it's also extremely easy to blend out. It's almost like a velvety cream. Very, very nice. I like that one a lot, so that will stay. I am gonna declutter the Revolution Cream Bronzer. This is a good cream bronzer formula, don't get me wrong. This used to be my favorite, affordable cream bronzer. I have a new favorite now, but this one is extremely pigmented. Like, do you see that? You have to be so careful. Do you see how opaque that is? And I don't have that much product on my finger, and that's how pigmented it is. So if that's what you're looking for, look no further. This is a good affordable cream bronzer and it has a lot of pigment, but I have a newer one from the drugstore that I like more than this. So I am gonna declutter that one. I am also gonna declutter the Say Sun Melt Bronzer. Kind of surprised about this, but not really, because this is one that I think is good. Like there's nothing wrong with it, but I've never thought, I've never fallen in love with this. This is the shade Light Bronze. It's very warm. It's very, this one has almost like a, an oily texture, but it's very uh, pigmented. So it's a little bit kind of like the Skin Enhancer from Mario, but this has a lot more pigment. I don't know, it's just, it's not a favorite. I never, ever, I don't know the last time I reached for this. And I just know that I could get rid of it and I wouldn't miss it. I wouldn't even realize that it was gone. So that I am gonna get rid of. Let's talk about Hourglass. I am very torn on this because I feel like this has happened to me before and I don't know if it's just a me thing or what it is, but every time I get one of these hourglass bronzers, I feel like they don't, like I don't get much of anything. Like, I don't know, I just feel like every time I use it, I'm very underwhelmed and it's almost like it depends on where you pick up the product because again, it's marbled, kind of like we were talking about earlier with that Laura Geller powder foundation. But then like I swatch it there and it looks good. I don't know, sometimes I feel like it looks like just powdery, like not much of anything. I'm gonna put that in the babies with the Jones Road. Okay, then we have five drugstore bronzers. Milani, uh, silky matte bronzer. This used to be my favorite. I don't know. I don't use this one anymore. I used to use it all the time. And it's a good color. Like it's a great neutral shade. This is shade one. I mean, it's a great matte bronzer. I'm gonna swatch it actually next to this Maybelline Fit Me powder. So this is not technically a bronzer, but I've used it like a bronzer. This is the Fit Me powder, but just in a deeper shade. So this is 320 Tan, and that is Milani number one. Because these two are very similar. I definitely don't need both of those. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's start with the one I'm gonna declutter. This infallible one, is. this is shade Light Medium. This is a really nice formula. It reminds me of like the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless. I do find though that sometimes this goes on my skin patchy, which is interesting because like it didn't swatch patchy there. That's light medium. I just, it's just not a favorite. The formula has a lot of kick up when you put the brush in, which I don't love. It's not a deal breaker, but it's not my favorite thing in a bronzer formula and I don't like it enough to keep it. So that one, I feel I can let go. Okay, I think we're gonna let Maybelline go and keep Milani. Mainly because I like the color of the Milani better, which is here. I like the Maybelline one too. 
But I, I just, I don't need both of these because I know I'm not going to use them both. There's just no point. So I'm going to declutter Maybelline Keep Milani. Then we have Neutrogena, which is a gorgeous bronzer. This has four different shades in it, but this you cannot get anymore. They discontinued it. Why? I don't know. Neutrogena does this with their makeup a lot, it seems. And it's a nice bronzer. I like it, but I'm not going to be able to use it in videos. So I'm going to declutter. It is a good one, though. If you happen to find it somewhere, it's good. But I searched everywhere online for it the last time. I tried to link it, and nobody has it. Not even Walmart. And I used to be able to link Neutrogena makeup pretty regularly on Walmart. Not even Walmart had it. Then the L'Oreal Lumi bronzer in the shade number one. Now this is a really pretty bronzer. It's a, uh, definitely a glowier bronzer. This actually kind of reminds me of the RMS bronzer formula. It's that really silky, creamy bronze that has some glow but not super shimmery. I'm gonna declutter. I'm gonna declutter. if. If I'm choosing, I'm going to use that RMS bronzer. I like the L'Oreal one, but, I, well, no. I changed my mind. We're going to keep this one. We're going to keep that one from L'Oreal and declutter the infallible one. This is going to be a really hard group. Oh, I'm dreading this. Okay, this one's easy. Fenty Cream Bronzer in Butter Biscuit. This has been a favorite forever. And I still love it. I think this is this is still one of my favorite cream bronzers ever. It's perfect. If you want a neutral cream bronzer that has just the right amount of pigment, it's easy to blend, gorgeous on the skin, this is it from Fenty. I love this one. Easy Keep. Another easy keep is Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate. I have not had this for very long at all. This is Intensity number one. I got this, I guess it was the most recent Sephora sale in Intensity one. And this, I mean, I wanted it forever. I finally got it. And I do think it's an absolutely beautiful cream formula. Even the highlighter in here, which I didn't swatch, but very pretty, balmy highlighter. It's, the highlighter is very highly underrated to me. But anyways, since we're talking about bronzer right now, uh, we'll stick with bronzer. But yes, that is staying. Another keep is the Sigma Powder Bronzer. This one is in the shade Light. I think this is a great matte powder bronzer. I love the color on this one. And this, again, this is another product from Sigma that I think is very underrated. No one talks about Sigma powders in general. The blushes, the bronzers, the loose powder. I don't know why, because they're great. They're very smooth and almost like a blurring type bronzer formula. Very, very high quality. I love that. So that one I will definitely keep. I will also keep Chantecaille Real Bronze in the shade Cien, or no, Serena. Serena. So this uh, was the limited edition, or I don't know if it was limited edition, but it was the packaging from last year. So that is the shade Serena right there. And again, this one is actually similar to the RMS formula as well, now that I think about it. But this is, I mean, it's beautiful bronzer. Highly recommend if you like a little bit of glow in a powder bronzer, this formula is beautiful. Oh my gosh, this is a really, really hard group. Okay, I have two of the Patrick Ta duos. I have She Sculpted, which looks like this. This one, as you can see, has a bronze or a powder and a cream. This color is a little bit cooler. And then I also have She's Bronzed, which looks like this, which is warmer. And if you know me, you know. I love the Patrick Ta duos, the blushes and the bronzers. I prefer the blushes of the two. If I had to pick, I would choose the blushes, but doesn't mean I don't like 
the bronzers. I just really love the blush, but I am gonna keep both of these. So this is She Sculpted, this is She's Bronzed. I don't use these all the time, but when I do want more of like a made up look, I will reach for these. Cause this, these creams are pretty pigmented and so are the powders. But you know me, I'm a Patrick Ta fan to the max. So those, those are not going anywhere. And if you're wondering that she sculpted and that's, she's bronzed. So you can see she sculpted. They're about the same depth in terms of the shade. She's sculpted is just cooler and she's bronzed is warmer. Then we have the NYX Buttermelt Bronzer. This one is the shade All Butted Up. And this I will keep. This is a really nice powder bronzer formula. The only thing is the shades do run a little bit on the pink side, which for me is not bad, because like I said earlier, sometimes the pinkier, rosier bronzers actually look the most natural on my skin tone. But most of the shades do have like a peachy pink kind of undertone, but it's a beautiful formula. It, this is a formula that does not in any way feel like drugstore. It's very smooth and it has that kind of creamy powder texture to it. It's really, really nice. So I will keep that from NYX. Then we have the Fenty Powder Bronzer in the shade Into Sun. Now this is a really light powder bronzer and I got this thinking I could use it as like a, a way to set a cream bronzer that's not intensely pigmented because sometimes if your cream bronzer is, or at least for me, if your cream bronzer is on the darker side, you want to set it, but you don't want to go in with then another really pigmented powder because then it looks like too much. That's what I bought this for and that's what I like to use it for. It's light on its own. Like you can see, it's a very, very light um, shade. But if you have fair skin or you have trouble finding a bronzer that doesn't look too dark or too orange and you're more fair, this shade is really good. Number one, Into Sun. Um, and it, it's not orangey at all. It's very neutral, just like Butter Biscuit is in the cream formula. So I will keep that. Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Divine Bronzer in Nude Honey. I am gonna declutter this. Um, I have found that I am just not a huge Pat McGrath person um, in terms of the makeup. None of their products, aside from the lip liner and the shade structure, that's been a favorite for a long time, but none of the products just are loves for me. And I don't really know why, like this is not a bad bronzer, but it's definitely not on the level that some of these other ones are that I'm keeping. I just feel like I could definitely be without this and not even realize that it's gone. So I am gonna declutter. Pat McGrath. I'm going to keep Surat Artistique Bronzer and Soleil Du. These, okay, this formula, if you have ever tried Surat eyeshadows, it's this formula basically. There is nothing else like it. It is the most gorgeous, smooth, velvety powder that has just like a little bit, tiny, tiny bit of a sheen on the skin, but it just looks so pretty and natural. It looks like your skin on your skin. So it looks like your skin is naturally this color. Something about the texture or the powder, I don't know what it is, but this is a beautiful formula. This, the eyeshadows are the same way. Such a good, high quality, luxurious powder from Surat. So that is a keep. This is a keep the new MAC, MAC Skin Finish Bronzer. I just got this. I've only had this for like a month. So we're gonna keep this. This is shade medium rosy, which looks like this. And this is a nice rosier undertone as well. If you're someone that finds bronzers can look a little too orange on you, this one has a nice kind of peachy, pinky undertone and it's a nice it's a nice formula it's brand new to me though so i need to keep using it i haven't tested this one very much but 
We will keep the Give Pick It Up Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo. Does anyone know what's going on with this product? I bought mine from a Sephora inside Kohl's like two months ago and they were 50% off. That's why I bought it and I always kind of wanted to try this formula. These are nice, um, but I'm wondering like, are they discontinuing? Like, I don't, I don't understand what's going on with these. And the one thing I will say is I wish they would have done a little flap over the cream on these like the Patrick Ta duos because I could definitely see where the powder might get mixed in with the cream the more you use this. So there is the powder and there is the cream, but this, this is a good formula. I hope they don't discontinue it, but I don't know what's going on with these. I will keep mine for now. Hopefully it's not being discontinued. Y'all, this is so hard. This is even harder than the foundation category and the concealer category. So I feel like I'm still keeping too many things, but okay, we'll keep going. I'll reevaluate at the end, but anyways, all right. Two easy ones, Mario bronzing serums. I have talked these into the ground at this point, but these are fantastic. If you want a sheer bronzer, for the summer or hot weather or you just like something really thin and lightweight look no further these are really nice because they're so thin and they're really easy to use and they set down so they're they don't stay super oily or tacky feeling you can also mix them in with moisturizer or foundation because they have a pump that one was the shade light and i also have Shade light medium. Light medium is warmer and shade light is a little bit more neutral, but I have already used these so much and they haven't even been out for very long. Like this is, this is one of the best products of the year for sure. So light medium and light, I love them both. Those are very easy keeps. I am also keeping this from Milani. This is the Cheek Kiss bronzer and Hey Honey. So this has definitely replaced the Revolution cream bronzer for me. This one is still pigmented, but it's not as pigmented as the Revolution one. And I really like the tone of Hey Honey. It's pretty neutral, which is what I'm always kind of trying to find in a bronzer. This is fantastic. Easy keep. I will also be keeping the House Labs bronzer. This one is shade light level three. This is another beautiful powder. This one is one of those that kind of looks like cream on the skin. And it almost feels like it too when you swatch it because it's so buttery. Ooh, it's a really, really, really nice formula. I love the House Labs bronzer. So that one has got to stay. I will also be keeping these from Persona. These are the Dream Stick or the Bronze Multi Sticks, I think is what they're called. I have the shade Dune and the shade Mojave. Mojave is better for me in the winter time. It's a very very pretty neutral bronze. Good if you have fair skin too and you have trouble finding a bronzer that isn't too warm. Mojave is good. Dune is much warmer and I can wear it but I have to be a lot or I have to have self tan or I have to have a tan. You can see the difference there. Mojave I'm definitely keeping because that is a really good one. I like Dune too. It's just really warm so I can't wear it all the time, but I am gonna keep it because I really like the Persona formula. So those can stay. I think I am also gonna declutter this from Nude Sticks. This is the All Over Face Bronze Color in the shade Bondi Bell. I've actually used this one quite a bit. Let me swatch it. What's interesting is they describe this actually as like a cooler tone bronzer, but actually it's quite warm on me, so 
I would definitely say it leans on the warm side. This is shade Bondi Belle. They also have Bondi Bay, which is probably their more popular color. It's deeper than this one. This is one of the newer shades. I like nude sticks, but I don't love them. Like it's one of those brands that I think their stuff is good, but not so good that I would choose this over a lot of the other cream bronzers that I have. I think it's fine, but I think I could, I'm fine without it. So I think I will declutter that one. I am gonna keep the Merit Bronze Balm. This one is in the shade Clay. This is a very sheer, kind of like a, almost like a gel formula bronzer. That is it right there. This is basically like the Mario Skin Enhancer in a stick. So if you like the Mario Skin Enhancer, you would probably like this product. It's just, it's in a stick and not a compact. But I do actually like this formula and I like that type of product, so I will keep that one. We have Rare Beauty Cream Bronzer Stick. I love this formula. I don't love the shades and I have two. I have Happy Soul and Bright Side. I am gonna declutter Happy Soul because this one is just way too warm. Almost leaning like orangey on me. Gorgeous formula though. This cream is, this has like a velvety texture. When you blend this in, it's very, very creamy, like extremely creamy, but then once it sets down, it becomes like a velvety texture. It's very unique, but I don't love shade Happy Soul. So I'm gonna declutter and then bright side also can be a bit warm, but it's much more cool than Happy Soul, like you can see there. Bright side is much a much better tone for me. So I'm gonna keep bright side and declutter Happy Soul. The Say Do Bronze in which one is this? Sand, I think. Yeah. This is pretty new to me. I don't feel super confident on my feelings on this one. It's good. It's not a favorite so far, but again, I haven't had this for a super long time. So I wanna keep it, keep testing it. I do like the shade Sand as well. So that one can stay. Tarte Sculpt Tape. This is good, but I'm gonna declutter it because I, I don't really use this type of product. I don't have the Charlotte contour wand anymore either. I just don't use these with the little sponge tip applicator. I do like this color. I think this one is cool bronze. I think I can let this go. I really do. And Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Cream Bronzer in the shade Fair. Okay, I'm really torn on this one. Okay, so this is a very matte bronzer, but God, it's a good formula though. No, we gotta keep that. That in the shade one, very neutral, could kind of be a bronzer or a contour. The shade kind of, it could be both. It's a really nice shade, it's matte. Cream, very pigmented, but very easy to fix. Like not, not difficult to blend at all. You get a lot of product in here. That one can stay. Okay. This is it for bronzers. How have I how have I accumulated this many bronzers? I'm more of a blush person, yet I have all of these bronzers. It's just crazy. Okay. Easy Westman Atelier. These are not going anywhere. I have a mini in biscuit. I love this product. I love everything about it. Shade, formula, 10 out of 10. I have Biscuit and I have Truffle. I use Biscuit the most. Truffle is a nice, like, warmer tone, though, if um, for summer or self-tan, so those are easy. Then we have the Chanel bronzers. So I have the Deep Bronze, which is this, and then I have the regular, or the lighter color. I don't have the medium one. I wanna say I almost decluttered these my last declutter and then I didn't end up doing it. The light one is really warm and the deep one is more of like a red tone. The deep one is gorgeous if I use a light hand and I have a little bit of color in my skin because again, it has that more reddish tone. It's almost 
similar to Truffle from Westman Atelier. This one is super light, very warm, but there's just something about it. There's just something about it, about this formula. I won't get rid of it. I just won't. I just will not get rid of these. They don't bother my skin. I think these are both definitely, this one is definitely expired. This one probably is not. This one's newer, the darker one. Lighter one is probably expired, but it doesn't smell. I mean, it still has the same smell, the same Chanel smell. I'm keeping them. Okay, I am gonna declutter the LYS, believe it or not, because I think this is like a holy grail for a lot of people. This is so creamy. I feel like it's too creamy. Whenever I use this, it's so creamy that the formula is kind of hard to apply. It moves, it doesn't, kind of hard to get it to stay in place, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So that's it there. This is shade Motivate, that's the lightest color. It's very warm and very, very pigmented, very creamy. I don't know why, I've not fallen in love with this one and I feel like I'm definitely the odd man out with this because I apparently everybody loves this one, but I, I'm i just not, not that into that one. All right, milk. I have the Sculpt Stick in the shade Toasted and I have the Bronzer in the shade Dazed. These were sent to me in PR. I never use these ever, ever. And it's not because they're bad. The milk cream formula is a great formula, but I don't reach, for, I do not reach for these. And I, I have no reason as to why, I just don't. I have no clue. Cause the formula is nice. The toasted color is more of like that sculpting shade, which I don't really use. And if I do, I use Westman Atelier in Biscuit. So I think I'm gonna let that one go. And then Dazed, I think I can let it go. It's just not, I don't know. You know how sometimes there's products that are not bad, but for whatever reason, you just don't gravitate towards them. I think that's a thing too sometimes with declutters. Sometimes you just don't want something. There's nothing wrong with it, but for whatever reason, it's just not your thing. You know, I feel that way about those. Last, we have the Mario sticks, the sculpting sticks. I have shade light and shade light medium. I feel torn on these, to be honest. Not because they're bad. They're not bad at all. Um, I just don't use... Oh no, what's wrong with mine? Mine is like not wanting to move up. Okay, this is shade light and this is shade light medium. The reason I'm hesitating, these are very like makeup-y type. Why is mine, neither of mine are moving up? Uh-oh. Well, that may be my answer then. These are a much more pigmented cream than his other cream formulas. And they're just, they're very makeup-y. So this is for when I would do like a full face of makeup, which to be real, I don't do that often. So I'm just, I'm unsure if I need these. And why is this not turning up? Well, I guess that's my answer for that. I don't know what's going on with that. And this one's doing the same thing. It's coming up a little, but it's like stuck. It won't, okay, that's really weird. Okay, I was undecided about those, so I guess that means those are going. And that is it for bronzer. Okay, let me count things up and I'll give you the numbers. All right, so these are the ones I'm getting rid of. I did add this one back in, the L'Oreal Lumi Bronzer. I kept thinking about that one and I, I didn't feel like I really needed that, so I put this one in. So we have 19 here, we have two in the maybes. So we're for sure getting rid of 19. We are keeping 32, which is still a lot, but it's okay. And then we have two maybes. So possibly decluttering 21, keeping 32, but we'll have to see in the declutter chopping vlog video on these. But for now, we started with 53, we're keeping 32 and decluttering 19.
Let's move into highlighter. Now, this category, I have got to cut these down like significantly because I do not use highlighter. I very rarely use a highlighter. So I've really got to think about what I'm keeping here because I just, I have way too many. This is not all of them. Let's start with something I know that's staying, the Dior Backstage uh, Glow Face Palette. This, honestly, I could just keep this palette and be happy in terms of highlight because this is everything you need. All of these colors are also beautiful eyeshadows. I don't see myself ever getting rid of this one. So that is an easy keep. I am also going to keep Fenty Diamond Balm. Not really for highlighter, but I like this as an eye topper. This is so pretty over literally any eyeshadow you have. You can tap this on and get this beautiful, like wet, glittery look. You could use it as highlight on the face also, but I want to keep it mainly for the eye purpose. Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Beauty Light Wand. I'm going to declutter. I remember when these were like everywhere, the Beauty Light Wands. Everyone was talking about them. This was a huge moment <laughs> in makeup. And I think I bought this because it's Pillow Talk but I don't use it. I don't use it. This is not, I don't see myself reaching for this again. So that can go. I also think I may declutter this. I, maybe not. The Sh Pillow Talk highlighter from, or from Charlotte Tilbury, obviously, but it's the Multi Glow in Romance Light. This was in my like really big Charlotte Tilbury phase. And I just, I'm not as into Charlotte Tilbury as I was at one time. So that's it kind of all mixed together, which of course is really pretty. Okay, that one's gonna go in the maybes. We'll do a maybe on that one. I have two from House Labs. I have Rose Quartz and I have Peach Quartz, I think. Yeah, this is a gorgeous formula. The powder highlighters from, um, House Labs are, I mean, they are so pretty. Like, look at that pink. See, and I was going to declutter the pink one, but now seeing the swatch, I don't think I can. So that's Peach Quartz, and that's Pink Quartz. <laughs> Am I going to pull this out and use it, though, is the question. Oh, but I do like this formula. Now looking at the swatches, the Charlotte Tilbury actually looks like the best color. This peach one looks a little bit more golden warm than I remember it looking before, but actually, I don't know. Those are gonna stay. We're gonna get rid of some, I swear. Benefit Cookie, okay, this was my favorite for a long time, but it is beautiful. But I mean, am I gonna use a highlight that blinding? No. And part of me wants to keep it because it's called Cookie, which is just stupid. <laughs> uh, okay, no, that one's gonna go. Becca Champagne Pop. This has seen better days, but this feels so nostalgic. Just, oh my gosh. Let me swatch this next to Peach Quartz from House Labs, just out of curiosity. I mean, they're definitely similar. So that's House Labs, that's Becca Champagne Pop. You know what, Peach Quartz has like, I don't know, I'm seeing reflect, like almost like a blue silver reflect in there that I've never really noticed before, but I'm not a huge, huge fan of that. All right, I'm gonna get rid of Champagne Pop. I, I think I can live without it. I really do, I don't need that. I'm gonna put these house labs in the yes still, but we may we may revisit that in a minute. Okay, the Patrick Ta ones, these are his new ones. I'm gonna keep these. I don't really know what's going on with these. I've seen that this one in the shade Daddy is like out of stock. It's been out of stock for a while and they have not restocked it. So I don't really know what's going on with it, but y'all know me. I love Patrick Ta 
and I always keep his products. So that's Daddy right there. It's like the rose gold one. But you know, I like them. Am I gonna reach for them all the time? No. Do I reach for highlighter all the time? No, but I am a Patrick Ta fan, like I said earlier. So I am gonna keep that. Then we've got MAC Soft and Gentle, such a classic. God, okay, that is beautiful. Okay, yeah, that one definitely has to say. You know what, I almost think I can get rid of the house labs. I really loved this at one point, but I don't know, like that's way prettier to me than Peach Quartz from House Labs. I don't know, something about the reflect in there is not my favorite. I honestly might declutter the pink one too. I'm gonna keep the pink for now. We may revisit at the end. And why do I wanna keep this? I bought this off Poshmark years after it was even on the market. Why? I don't know, because I always wanted this. That is the Omrezy highlighter. I always wanted it and never got it. So I bought it off Poshmark and do I ever reach for it? No. It's still so pretty though. Keeping it for now. And then this from Tom Ford, this is a skin illuminating powder duo in incandescent. I bought this a long time ago. I think I bought it on clearance somewhere online. Um, and this, I never use this ever, but it's so pretty. Like, look at those. Am I going to use it? I really don't think that I am. I never use it and I've had it for years. Okay, that's going to go. This is hard. This, this drawer has been even harder than foundation and concealer and, I, and primer. More highlighter. Keep definitely Sephora Collection Luminizer in Sparkling Honey. This is one of my favorite highlighters I've ever tried. I love the formula. I love the color. It's like a beautiful, warm nude. So creamy and nice. That definitely needs to stay. RMS Prosecco Fizz. This is brand new to me. And I used it today actually, and I really like this. This is another beautiful creamy formula, more of a champagne. This one is more pink, more of like a rosy nude highlight almost, but RMS, so keep. I'm going to declutter Mary Luminizer from the Balm. This is pretty, but I bought this actually way long after it was really popular. I bought it one time I was in New York at a Riley Rose store. Have you ever been in Riley Rose? It was owned by Forever 21 and it was a makeup store that had random makeup brands, like more indie, I guess, makeup brands. And this was one of them. And they had this product there and I bought it there. So I've kind of been holding on to it for that reason. But uh, I mean, it's pretty, but I just, I think I could live without it. So I'm going to declutter that. Now we have this one from Anastasia, which this is basically like the newer version of Omrezy. I really don't need both of these. So I'm going to swatch them next to each other. So that's Omrezy. That's the new one. Omrezy is a little bit lighter. It's a little more champagne. This one has more gold in it. I should keep the new one and declutter the old one. But I feel like I like the look of the original one better. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna put that in the keep for now. The Fenty Beauty Demi Glow that's not Demi at all. <laughs> I don't know why they named these Demi Glow and I also don't know why it's limited edition. So that is shade uh, Prosecco. These are extremely intense. Highlighters. They're also very pretty on the eyes, but they were limited edition, but I really, I just love this color. I gotta keep that one. Rare Beauty and Exhilarate. Oh, remember when these were like sold out everywhere? Oh my gosh. And they are still like that just blows me away. That's so pretty. And Exhilarate. I mean, that's one of the smoothest highlighters I've swatched this whole time. Okay, that 
definitely needs to stay. Sigma highlighter in Twilight. Okay, yeah, so this one's more of like a pink. It has a little bit of like a, that is so pretty. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know what? That's pink, but it's not like in your face pink. I almost want to keep that and declutter this House Labs one that's really, really pink. The only thing I could really do with this is use it as like a blush topper, but it's really pink. Yeah, I think we can declutter the House Labs and keep the Sigma one. Because the Sigma powder formula, again, is so good and no one, no one gives it any love. I don't know why. Bobbi Brown Pink Glow. So it's just a little like mini and icy pink. That one can go. I don't feel super attached to that. The Mario in the shade Pearl. That one's okay, but very underwhelming. I think I bought this for a Mario video one time. Not one of his best products in my opinion. I mean, it's pretty, but nothing that I feel like I need to hang on to. Merit. Uh, Day Glow Balm in Kava. Okay, so this is just like a wet, dewy, like balm. I will keep that. And then this is Surat. What is this called? The Torche Lumiere in Rose Diamon Diamante, I think. It's a cream. Really smooth, pretty cream highlight. It's got a lot of shimmer in it though. I think I could let that go. I have a highlighter in my everyday makeup drawer. Okay, this is it though for highlight. Obvious key are these Dior Glow Maximizers. I love these. I have Nude and Pink Glow or what is this? I think it's just pink. I love this formula for a liquid highlighter. I think these are both absolutely beautiful so that is pink and nude oh those are so nice so so nice and those actually you can apply this formula i don't know how or why but you can apply this over literally any product i've tried it over powders any foundation it doesn't do anything weird and it just gives the most beautiful glow on the skin i absolutely love those so those have to stay. Another obvious stay, Westman Super Loaded Tinted Highlighter in Peau de Peche. One of the prettiest products in my collection and in the summertime, this shade on my skin tone, I could actually get away with on its own, like as bronzer, blush, and highlighter. Because it has a little bit of the glow from the cream texture. It's kind of like a bronze, like a peachy bronze. So the peach kind of looks like a blush and then the kind of bronze base to it kind of looks like bronzer. That's a gorgeous one, so that one has to stay. I can declutter this one from Mob, the highlighting balm. This is a nice product. If you want something that's kind of similar to that Merit day glow balm it just gives like a wet look it, there's no like pigment in it really that's what you get from this i do find this to be a little bit sticky though honestly the merit one is too but i prefer the merit over this one so i can declutter that then i have mac cream color base which these have been discontinued and i don't know why because this is again a really really beautiful cream formula like look at that and this did i say what shade this is shell it's a pink like a frosty pink but am i gonna use it you know am i gonna pull this out and use it i don't know i'm feeling like i'm not so we're gonna go we're gonna or well, yeah we're gonna pass it on then i have two and a mini of the rare beauty liquid blushes or liquid highlighters so i have mesmerize and Enchant. Enchant is more of a light pink. Mesmerize is more of a rose gold. And I also have a mini of Mesmerize. I'm not sure why. All right, so there is Enchant and there is 
Did I say mesmerize? Is that right? Here's it. No. Yeah, mesmerize. I was like, is it memorize? No, it's mesmerize, Blair. Okay, which one do I like better? Honestly, they're very similar to the Dior that I have, the pink and the nude one. So I really don't need them, but I also really do like that formula from Rare Beauty. So I think I can declutter Enchant and keep Mesmerize. Cause this one is not quite as deep as Nude from Dior and it's different from Pink from Dior. I'm gonna keep the full size and declutter the mini. Cali Ray. Is this even around anymore? I really want to know. This is the highlight in the shade Starlight Beach. Such I don't know, I don't know what's going on with Cali Ray. I feel like a lot of their stuff has been on sale at Sephora, but look at that highlighter. Like that is a powder highlight. <laughs> right there. That is so pretty. That's in my everyday makeup this month. We're going to keep that. And I think that's it for highlighter. Let me count them up and I'll give you the numbers. I did add two additional ones in. I'm gonna get rid of Omrezy. Blair, are you ever gonna pull that out and use it? Number one, you don't use highlight. Number two, this is no longer on the market. Number three, this is like a total glam type of product which you don't wear hardly ever. So I put that in and I also added the Merit Day Glow Balm. Mainly because there is another product that I have heard is very similar to this, but better, and I really want that one. So I'm thinking I'm gonna declutter this and buy the other one, and the other one is the Victoria Beckham highlighter stick in the light color. I keep hearing how great that is and how just balmy and sheer it is like this, and it's not as sticky as this. So I am decluttering that in anticipation of getting the Victoria Beckham at some point. So we are getting rid of 17 and keeping 15. So we actually cut this in half. So not too bad. So started with 32, decluttering 17 and keeping 15. Okay, on to the last bit of this drawer, which is face palettes. Face palettes have always been one of my weaknesses. I always want them and I don't know why because I always reach for individual products over face palettes, but face palettes get me. I don't know what it is, but I just something about them really, really appeals to me. So this is very, very, very tough, but very necessary because these, these need to be cut down as well because this is just, it's just out of hand. Okay, Le Beige Healthy Glow Sunkissed Powder Palette from this year in Medium Glow Keep. I'm very happy with this. I will use this. I like the colors. I don't regret this purchase at all. In fact, I'm really happy that I bought this because I like all of the colors. Even this like corally blush, I really like. The medium bronzer is not too deep for me and the highlighter is pretty subtle. So that is a stay. This is gonna go Dior contour palette. Number one, I don't contour. Number two, they don't make this anymore. <laughs> I was just, I forget. I think I've had this since my first year on YouTube, I'm pretty sure. But you get basically two highlighting colors and two contour or bronzer colors in here. but. I don't use it, I'm not going to use it. They don't even make it anymore. So that one can go. I will keep this. This is actually a highlighter palette. This should probably have been in with highlighters. This is the Shade and Illuminate Highlighting Duo in Mood Light. This I will keep. This is the most gorgeous face, just glow powder, but not really like a highlighter. They just give the prettiest sheen to, it's like a sheen to your skin. It doesn't really look like highlighter, it just gives your skin a little bit of radiance. And they also look beautiful on the eyes as well. But that uh, is a definite stay. For me, I'm gonna put those with the highlighters actually. Then I have Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. Look at this thing. This is, 
I think I got this my first year on YouTube as well. And I, it's, I mean, it's been used, but I, I don't use it anymore. I don't, I need to get rid of it. Part of me wants to keep it just for the nostalgia of it, but I don't think, I don't think I need it. I'm gonna declutter. Now we're getting into Charlotte Tilbury, which this is gonna be even harder. Film Star Bronze and Glow, the uh, contour and the highlight. This is such like classic Charlotte Tilbury. When I was first getting into her, this was like her most popular or one of her most popular products, but I don't use it. I don't use it and I don't think I'm going to. I really don't. So that's gonna go. This category is gonna be gonna be brutal. Okay, I have three Charlotte Tilbury face palettes. Why? Because I have no self-control when it comes to face palettes. I just don't. But there is one of these that I like so much better than the other two, and it's this one. And sadly, I do not think, I'm almost positive they don't make this anymore. This was the Instant Look of Love in a Palette, the Pretty Blushed Beauty. This is perfection. She needs to bring this back. Every single powder in here is good. The eyeshadows are good, the bronzer, base powder, highlighter, blush. This was her best face palette she's ever done and they discontinued it. But I can't, I won't get rid of that one. It's good, I mean, you could do your whole face literally with that palette. Then we have Pillow Talk palette and we have super, what is this? Nude Gasm palette. This formula, I'm not a huge fan of. They're very hardly pressed in here and they are very hard to get pigment from. I, I don't know what it is. Like these blushes, like if you don't really dig your finger in there, you don't get much pigment from these. Like I did it with my finger there, but it's cause I really got in there and got the pigment. So part of me is sentimental and wants to keep this because it's pillow talk, but the other part of me is like no Blair. This one I'm definitely gonna declutter because I will only use this really, this bronzer color or this whatever you would call it. I think it's supposed to be more of like a contour. It's more of like a gray tone. This is too deep for me. This highlighter is like a peachy color and I wouldn't really use that for my skin tone. So this one, I'm gonna declutter for sure. I'm just undecided about this one. I could always put this in the declutter chopping block video. I think that is what I'll do. I'm gonna put that in that video and then I am gonna declutter this. This is a good product. It's the Sephora Collection Face Palette. Two blushes, a highlight, and a bronzer. Not getting rid of this because it's not good. It's actually very good, but I'm cutting this down to what I just can't live without because I don't use face palettes ever. So that is also gonna go. Okay, this is it. This is everything from the drawer. All right, hourglass face palettes. Every year I say I'm not gonna buy it. For the holidays, every year I give in and I buy it. But there's one that I like more than the other three, like by far, and it's this one. The one, most recent one, this was palette number one, but I put it in the leopard palette. So this was the jellyfish color story, but I got it in the leopard palette. The bronzer in here is a really good tone. The blushes I don't have in singles. Highlighters are nice, finishing powder is nice. All of these work really well for my skin tone and I like the packaging on this one the best. That one is gonna stay. Elephant, I like, but I don't love what's inside as much. The bronzer is very, very, very warm and a little bit dark for me. The blushes are okay. This one's a little bit too shimmery and they're honestly very similar. I wish they had made these two blushes a little bit different. Finishing powders are nice in here and the highlight's a little bit dark for my skin tone. I do like the outside, but I'm, I'm not gonna use it. I'm not gonna use it. And this is from, this is the Ambient Sculpture palette. Honestly, I don't remember what year this is from. 
And this is the Ghost palette, which the Ghost palette has one of my favorite blushes of all time, which is Sublime Flush right here. But I have a single of that, so I don't need that. It also has, I think it's Iridescent Rose, that one right there. Um, that, well, actually that's not a permanent color. I was going to say that's permanent, but I don't think it is. It has two finishing powders. It has a bronzer, which is a nice bronzer from what I remember, but I like the most recent one a little bit better. They're going to go. Oh my God. I cannot believe I did that. And final two. Now this is pretty easy for me. I love this palette. This face palette has my heart. The high, what was this called? Hyper Natural. I love this. I love everything about this. I love the eyeshadows, the blushes, the bronzers, the formulas in here. I, this palette just makes me happy. That one's an easy keep. This palette, the Glam Face Palette. I like the eyeshadows. I'm not a fan of these. I don't love the cream blush or the highlighter in here, but I do like the eyeshadows. I'm gonna declutter. I'm gonna declutter. Okay, that was my most brutal one, I think. So I am keeping four. That's impressive. I'm only keeping four. Decluttering nine, possibly 10, if I get rid of this one. So we started with 14 and we are keeping four, decluttering nine, possibly 10. And we did it. We did this whole drawer. This has taken me hours to film this. So now I'm gonna gather everything up and we'll put everything back in the drawer.